Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. The term territorial spirits is a description. It's not really a name, but a description. Let's understand the following. If we remember at Gensarine, where Jesus cast the demons into the swine, the demons implored him, do not send us out of the region. They did not want to leave that particular area to which they were somehow assigned, either by Satan or by divine permission, they were definitely geographically situated in their presence. Also, the Old Testament speaks of Shadim, devils, calling pagan gods demons. The gods of the Old Testament, like Baal and Marduk and uh, Bagon, these demon idols were exactly that. They were demons, the gods of Egypt. They were associated with that territory and that turf. The Greek term is uh, arche, we get the word archaeology, meaning first. Okay, they, they have some kind of a spiritual headship over an area. The Hebrew term is usually rashi ot, again from the word rosh, head. So there are these realities that we inter translate most accurately in Ephesians as principalities principalities. The biblical term would be better, the biblical terms from Greek and Hebrew would be better translated principalities than territorial spirits, even though territorial spirits is a pretty good description. Now you see this in a lot of places, and I've seen it in a lot of places, but let's begin in Israel. Let's understand Israel, for instance. You can go to Mount Carmel at Haifa, Har Carmel on the Galilee coast. In the days of Justin Martyr, that was a center of Babylonian priestcraft in the early church. Today, it is the tomb of the Bab, the founder of the Baha'i cult. There's also a witch's coven that meets on Mount Carmel, but the Baha'i cult. It was also a place of Ashtaroth worship in the days of Ahab and Jezebel, the female cult deity Ashtaroth. Today, some Catholics claim visions of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. There's a Carmelite monastery, a Roman Catholic monastery with Mary, well, they say it's Mary, up on the top of a pole. Of course, it's not Mary, it's Ashtaroth. And every year, the Catholics, in the Arab Catholics, carry Mary in a procession from Mount Carmel down into the center of the city of Haifa to a Roman Catholic church and singing Ave Maria. Well, this is simply the pseudo-Christianization, the Roman Catholicization of the Ashtaroth worship that had always happened there. Something else that took place in that area just further up the Galilee coast, going into southern Lebanon, the area around Tyre and Sidon, just north of the Israeli border at Rosh Hanikra. The mutilation of children to Molech was popularly celebrated there. Today, the Shia Muslim population, and it's a concentrated area of Shia Muslims, aligned with Iran, and the Mullahs in Iran controlled the Shia Islam of, 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 of Lebanon, by and large, you'll see them dragging little boys to commemorate the Battle of Karbala, and they're dragging these little boys before these Mullahs, these Islamic clergymen with beards, and they have hatchets, and they're hacking the heads of these little children open, and the little children are screaming, La Amma, La Amma, La Amma, in Arabic, No Mommy, No Mommy, No Mommy, and the mothers are dragging these crying kids up for these barbarian savages, these, these mullahs of Shia Islam, to hack their heads open. Um, I, I believe that you can watch this on YouTube, but it's absolutely terrible. 
Well, again, it's simply the Islamization of the old Molech worship taking place in the same place. But let's go beyond this now. Let's go to uh, Germany. One of the things that restrains these principalities, well, there are basically three things. The conviction of the Holy Spirit. The second would be human government that is motivated by the prayers of the people in its action. And the third is the preaching of the gospel. When liberal Protestantism replaced conservative Protestantism in Germany, when the Pietists were gone, the Moravians were gone, and liberal higher criticism, Boltzmann and these people, and Wellhausen came out of Tübingen University and other such institutions, and higher criticism took the place of, of uh, faith-based academic scholarship, what you had was 19th century German rationalism corrupted theology into, into higher criticism, into something that was based on Hegelian and Darwinistic presupposition that destroyed faith. Well, seven of the nine Lutheran bishops, seven of the nine evangelical Lutheran bishops, back Hitler, the Roman Catholic Church in Germany signed a concordat with Hitler in Munich. Michael Schmaus, the archbishop who was a Jesuit in Munich, uh, was later promoted to cardinal by Pope John XXIII and was called the theologian of Munich. He made a concordat with Hitler, much the same as Mussolini had made a concordat with the Pope in Italy. Not only that, Hitler came to power with the backing in coalition with the Zentrum of Hans von Papen. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church, the Zentrum, the, the Bavarian Catholic Party called the Zentrum, made a coalition with Hitler. That's how Hitler got elected. That's how the Nazis got in. Now, Hans von Papen was sentenced at Nuremberg, but by the interventions of Pope Pius XII, he was not hung. He, was, he served eight years. Hans von Papen was responsible for the largest terrorist attack in the United States before September 11th. The largest uh, terrorist attack that ever happened in America took place at <clears throat> a place called Black Tom on the New Jersey waterfront opposite Manhattan in Jersey City, New Jersey, near the Statue of Liberty. And it was a terrorist attack for um, on behalf of the Kaiser, on behalf of Germany, uh, because America was supplying wherewithal to fight the war, armaments and so forth, and munitions to Great Britain and to France. And uh, you had Irish stevedores who had immigrated from Ireland. They were Roman Catholic, and they disliked the British because of the Easter uprising and so forth. And they were easily recruited by Hans von Papen, who said, we're not doing this against America, we're doing it against the British. And so these Irish longshoremen, stevedores, put these explosives on these ships, and this was von Papen. Well, how did this happen? How did the Roman Catholic Church bring Hitler to power? How did the Lutheran Church help bring Hitler to power? Quite simply, the gospel stopped being preached. Once that happened in Germany, the ancient Teutonic war gods of, of the German tribes that attacked Rome came back to power. Whenever the gospel stops being preached, Whenever the government is no longer godly and is no longer influenced by the prayers of the people and Judeo-Christian principles derived from Scripture, when the laws are no longer based on scriptural principles, you're going to have a problem. The ancient principalities are going to reassert themselves. I've seen this in Northern Ireland. It's unbelievable. You have mythical Celtic gods and goddesses like Irin and a character called Gaholin. And you'll see the murals in the Catholic and Protestant areas of Northern Ireland of these ancient Celtic gods. Like Irin was the old hag. We get the word Erin, Ireland, who demanded the blood of the youth so she could stay young and beautiful in ancient Celtic mythology. Well, why would the IRA use this kind of imagery in its murals and in its political propaganda. Well, again, there's demonic powers on back of this thing. The IRA godfathers are basically gangsters, and the Protestant UVF, the Protestant Unionist radicals, are gangsters, but they got the youth. 
the youth was doing the killing and getting blown up and shot. It's, it's the same thing. Once the gospel is not preached, once the government departs from scriptural principles, there's a spiritual battle going on, and the ancient principalities will reassert themselves and do what they always did. We see this in many countries and in many places. I've seen it in Northern Ireland, we saw it in Germany, we've seen it in a lot of places. But no place do we see it more acutely than in the Middle East and in Israel. They will always come back once the gospel is not being preached and once the government is no longer based on God's principles. That's always going to happen. So again, principality is a much, much better translation that you find in Ephesians chapter 6 of the Hebrew terms Rashiot and the Greek terms from Arche, much better. But <clears throat> territorial spirits, although it's not the term, it is actually a fairly good description. Hope that answers the question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you.